This is a Peruvian whistling vessel. You fill it with water and then you tip it back and forth and as you do, it makes a whistling sound. Different vessels make different sounds. For example, this one makes the sound of a bird, I guess. This one makes the sound of a slightly different bird. This makes the sound of a person. I guess? I don't know. I thought I had a good idea of how these things work just from like thinking about it. But there's one thing I really can't explain. My theory is that as you tip the thing, water moves from this compartment to this compartment. As this compartment fills with water, it forces air out through some kind of whistle that's hidden inside the head. But if air is free to leave the vessel via the whistle, then surely as you tip the thing, you should just get a continuous whistling sound. But you don't, you get a warbling sound. And I can't figure out why. When I made the Assassin's Teapot video, the only way to see what was going on inside was to smash one of my teapots. And a commenter said, why didn't you just get it x-rayed? And I thought, yeah, great. I'll just take it down to my local x-ray shop. Thanks for the advice. And then brilliantly, I got an email from a company called Creative Electron based in California saying, we x-ray things for a living. If you ever want to see inside something without smashing it, <laughs> give us a call. You might recognize Creative Electron's work from the Veritasium video about bowling balls. It's a really good video, the link's in the card and the description. But when loads of you sent me the Peruvian whistling vessel as an idea for a video, I really didn't want to smash one because they're handmade and it just didn't feel right. So I thought, I'll send a few to Creative Electron, see what they can do, but also, I mean, how cool would it be to get an x-ray of these things? So here you go, this is the first vessel I showed you. It's the one from the thumbnail. There's definitely something interesting going on in the head. So I asked them to take a closer look with their scanner and they took images from all around it so we can kind of pan around. How cool is that? I'm pretty sure that's a whistle, which seems to support my hypothesis of how it works. If you're able to view stereograms, then go cross-eyed now to overlap these two images and you'll be able to see it in 3D. I didn't need any special photography for that. It's just that each successive frame is slightly to the right of the previous frame. So putting the next frame side by side with the previous frame is like having an image for the right eye and an image for the left eye. And it's not just for fun, like being able to see it in 3D really helps to figure out what's going on, especially with an X-ray where the details can be obscured by things in the foreground and things in the background. I made a video not long ago about how whistles work. So if you want the details, the link is in the card and the description. But from everything I learned making that video, it's pretty clear to me that this is a whistle. It also explains the holes either side of the head, like air couldn't flow through the whistle if it didn't have anywhere to escape to. I imagine those holes make the whistling sound easier to hear as well. My goal, of course, was to make a 2D transparent version of the Peruvian whistling vessel, and these x-rays gave me just about what I need for that, and here it is. Annoyingly, it doesn't work. It doesn't make a whistling sound when you tip it back and forth. It does whistle if I blow through this hole, but that's really not the point. And actually, I think the problem is that it is 2D. Like, the chamber simply isn't big enough. You need to force air through the whistle at high speed. But if your vessel is constrained to two dimensions, you just can't get the throughput. You can increase the volume of the vessel and therefore the throughput of air by extending it in the third dimension. But I really wanted to get something transparent that worked, and I had an idea. Although I didn't want to smash the thing, I thought maybe I can cut the thing in half and still have it work. I thought about getting it cut with a water jet, but the problem is it's not perfectly symmetrical because it's made by hand. And with water jet cutting, I would get this perfect flat plane through the whistling vessel. So, you know, maybe it would intersect perfectly through the head, but then it wouldn't intersect perfectly through the spout at the back or vice versa. So instead, this has been cut by hand. And then I glued this flexible plastic over the cut and there you go, it works, how good is that? 
Interestingly, this cutaway version doesn't warble. And to begin with, I was disappointed about that. But actually, I think it helps to explain why some of these vessels warble while others don't. My original assumption was that if the air channel through the whistle was really narrow, the receiving chamber could only fill with water very slowly. And so there would be an opportunity for an exchange of air and water between the two chambers when the vessel is tipped. When the vessel is tipped, water falls to this part of the receiving chamber, forcing air towards the exchange pipe. This wouldn't happen if the receiving chamber were able to fill up more rapidly. Like if I drastically reduce airflow through the whistle in the 2D version by covering up the vents, then look, you do get an exchange of air and water between the two chambers. In other words, you get a glug. It's a bit like the glug that happens in the gluggle jug that I demonstrated in a previous video. And of course, when the glug happens, that will affect the sound of the whistle, leading to a warbling sound. In that respect, it's very similar to the gluggle jug, the only difference being that in the whistling vessel, there is a narrow channel from which the air can escape in addition to the glugs. Whereas with the gluggle jug, there is no escape, only glugs. I can also initiate glugs by restricting airflow with this cutaway vessel, but I have to give it a jiggle to get it started. And that's because I have to overcome surface tension in the connecting pipe. And of course, the narrower the pipe, the more important surface tension is. And by cutting this thing in half, I've reduced the cross-sectional area of the pipe. I've made surface tension more significant in this cutaway version. So that might explain why you get warbles with the uncut vessel, but no warbles in the cut vessel. So for warbles to take place, you need a narrow escape through the whistle and you need a wide connecting pipe. I'm surprised the air has such trouble escaping actually. It might be to do with the shape of the whistle. It seems that the working principle might be similar to a sports whistle, which I talked about in the whistles video. The incoming stream loops around this bulb shape and interrupts itself. I'll go into a bit more detail about how that interruption of the airflow leads to a whistling sound in the whistling video. But the point is, it's reasonable to think that it would add some resistance to the flow of air through the whistle. It may have a similar working principle to the Tesla valve actually, that's easy to blow air through in one direction and hard in the other. But anyway, in support of the hypothesis that a warbling sound requires a narrow channel through the whistle and a wide connecting pipe, we can consider other vessels. With this vessel, there is no warbling. And look, the connecting pipe is much more narrow. This vessel warbles much more rapidly than this vessel. And that makes sense because the connecting pipe in this vessel is wider and shorter than it is in this vessel. And actually, in the x-rays, you can compare the whistle parts and see that Actually, they seem to have very similar geometry. So it's not a difference in the rate of flow of air, it's a difference in surface tension effects in the connecting pipe. The person whistling vessel, as I'm calling it, has a much wider connecting pipe and yet doesn't warble, which seems to contradict my hypothesis, except that if you look in the x-ray, you can see that the whistle mechanism has a much wider pipe. The air can escape so rapidly that the chambers aren't given a chance to glug. And in fact, if I restrict airflow out the whistle, you get incredibly rapid glugs. Something else about the whistle mechanism on this vessel, it's embedded in the handle, which makes it appear different, but the mechanism is essentially the same, except the pipe leading up to the whistle kind of curves upwards, meaning that most of the air will escape through the hole without really interacting much with the whistle mechanism, which is perhaps why this has a more raspy sound. One final thing about this vessel that's particularly nice is that it has a second whistle. It's only activated on the return tilt as water comes back into this chamber, forcing air out. And it only works if you cover this hole so that air is forced to go through the whistle instead of coming out of the hole. That's nice, isn't it?
Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Jane Street. Jane Street is the perfect sponsor because they don't want anything from you. They don't want your money. They don't want you to sign up for anything. They just really enjoy finding out how things work and solving problems. In other words, they're just like you and me and they wanted to support my channel. To be a little more specific about what Jane Street do, they enjoy figuring out how things work and solving problems in the financial world. If you enjoy doing those things in that context and you're looking for a job, then I strongly encourage you to get in touch with my friends at Jane Street. The link for that is in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.